Rifarat Ali al-Assad is the younger brother of the former president of Syria, Hafez Assad and Jamil Assad, and the uncle of the incumbent president Bashar al-Assad. He is alleged by some sources to be the commanding officer responsible for the Hammer massacre of 1982. Recently declassified material back his claims that his brother Hafez al-Assad was responsible, as do a number of commentators. He himself has always denied responsibility. He currently lives in France. Early life and education Rifarat al-Assad was born in the village of Kadahab near Latakir in western Syria on the 22nd of August 1937. He studied political science and economics at Damascus University and was later given an honorary PhD in politics from the Soviet Academy of Sciences. Early experience. Rifarat joined the Syrian Arab Army in 1958 as a first lieutenant, and was rapidly promoted after training in various Soviet military academies. In 1965, he became commander of a special security force loyal to the military wing of the BAATH and soon, supported Hafez al-Assad's overthrow of Salah Jadid and seizure of power in 1970. He was allowed to form in his own paramilitary group, the Defense Companies, in 1971, which soon transformed into a powerful and regular military force trained and armed by the Soviet Union. He was a qualified paratrooper. Under Hafez's rule, Rifarat al-Assad played a key role in his brother's takeover of executive power in 1970, dubbed the Corrective Revolution, and ran the elite internal security forces and the defense companies in the 1970s and early 1980s. He had a pivotal role throughout the 1970s and, until 1984, many saw him as the likely successor to his elder brother. Hafez Assad appointed him second vice president in March 1984. In 1976, he visited Lebanon as a guest of Tony Frankier since they had close and personal ties. Referring to their conversation later, he stated, Ultimately, you Christians are okay as tolerated dimish living under Islam. Our reward for apostasy is death. Muslims will not tolerate us the way they might do you, they will kill us as offenders of their religion. In February 1982, as commander of the defense companies, he allegedly commanded the forces that put down a Muslim Brotherhood revolt in the central city of Hama by instructing his forces to shell the city with BM-21 Grad rockets, killing thousands of its inhabitants. This became known as the Hammer Massacre. The United States journalist Thomas Friedman claims in his book From Beirut to Jerusalem that Rifarot later said that the total number of victims was 38,000. Rifarat has denied having a leading role in the Hammer Massacre. Rifarat Assad clarified his version for the Hammer Massacre during the conference in Paris to form the Syrian National Democratic Council on 15 November, 2011. Assad was also implicated in the 1980 Tadma prison massacre and acquired the sobriquet, the Butcher of Tadma, attempted coup d'etat, when Hafez al-Assad suffered from heart problems in late 1983, he established a six-member committee to run the country. Rifarat was not included, and the council consisted entirely of close Sunni Muslim loyalists to Hafez, who were mostly lightweights in the military security establishment. This caused unease in the Alawi-dominated officer corps, and several high-ranking officers began rallying around Rifarat while others remained loyal to Hafez's instructions. Rifarat's troops, now numbering more than 55,000 with tanks, artillery, aircraft and helicopters, began asserting control over Damascus, setting up checkpoints and roadblocks, putting up posters of him in state buildings, disarming regular troops and arbitrarily arresting soldiers of the regular army occupying and commandeering police stations and intelligence buildings, occupying state buildings. He was clearly launching a bid to succeed his brother. There was a clear division and tensions between forces loyal to Hafiz, namely the 3rd Armored Division, the Republican Guard, 
the various intelligence services, the national police, and the special forces, and those loyal to Reiferat. But by the middle of 1984 Harfus had returned from his sick bed and assumed full control, at which point most officers rallied around him. Initially, it seemed that Reiferat was going to be put on trial and even faced a questioning that was broadcast on television. However, it is believed that Harfaz's daughter Bushra actually saved him by convincing her father that purging him would disgrace the family and might cause tensions not only in the Assad family, but with the Maklauf family as well who are also the second most prevalent Alawite family dominating the leadership of the security services. Command of the defense companies, which was trimmed down to an armored division size, was transferred to another officer, and ultimately the entire unit was disbanded and absorbed into other units, like the 4th Mechanized Division, the Republican Guard, and the Airborne Special Forces Division. Reiferat was then sent to the Soviet Union on an open-ended working visit. His closest supporters and others who had failed to prove their loyalty to Harfas were purged from the army and Ba'ath party in the years that followed. During the 1990s, he nominally retained the post of vice president until 8 February 1998, when he was stripped of this. He had retained a large business empire both in Syria and abroad, partly through his son Suma. However, the 1999 crackdown involving armed clashes in Latakia destroyed much of his remaining network in Syria. Large numbers of Rifarat supporters were arrested. This was seen as tied to the issue of succession, with Rifarat having begun to position himself to succeed the ailing Hafas who in his turn sought to eliminate all potential competition for his designated successor, his son Bashar al-Assad. In France, Reiferat has loudly protested the succession of Bashar to the post of president, claiming that he himself embodies the only constitutional legality. He has made threatening remarks about planning to return to Syria at a time of his choosing to assume his responsibilities and fulfill the will of the people, and that while he will rule benevolently and democratically, he will do so with the power of the people and the army behind him, groups and organizations. Rifarat Sansuma is the head of a minor pan-Arab TV channel, the Arab News Network, which functions as his father's political mouthpiece. He also claims to run a political party, of uncertain fortunes. Reiferat himself heads the United National Group, which is another political party or alliance. It is known to have self-professed members among Reiferat's fellow exiles from Syria, but neither can be considered an active organization, even if they will regularly release statements in favor of Reiferat's return to Syria and protesting President Bashar al-Assad. Further, Reiferat founded the Arab Democratic Party in Lebanon in the early 1970s, a small Alawite sectarian political group in Lebanon, which during the Lebanese Civil War acted as an armed militia loyal to the Syrian government. Ali Eid, the general secretary of the party today, supports the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad. Foreign support for Reiferat Numerous rumors tie Reiferat al-Assad to various foreign interests. Reiferat was considered close, by some observers, to King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. Abdullah was married to a sister of Reiferat's wife, and Reiferat has on occasions, even after his public estrangement from the rulers in Syria, been invited to Saudi Arabia, with pictures of him and the royal family displayed in the state-controlled press. It is claimed that Reiferat is reputed to have turned even to Israel asking for assistance, and that he has initiated contacts with exiled representatives of the Muslim Brotherhood. After the Iraq War, there were press reports that he had started talks with U.S. government representatives on helping to form a coalition with other anti-Assad groups to provide an alternative Syrian leadership on the model of the Iraqi National Congress. Reiferat has held a meeting with the former Iraqi Prime Minister Ayad Alawi. Yosef Bodansky, the director of the U.S. Congressional Task Force on Terrorism and Unconventional Warfare, 
has stated that Rifarat enjoys support from both America and Saudi Arabia. He has been featured in the Saudi press as visiting the royal family in 2007. The Bashar government remains wary of his intentions and carefully monitors his activities. Rifarat was mentioned by the influential American think tank Stratfor as a possible suspect for the 2005 bombing that killed Lebanese ex-Prime Minister Rafi Hariri in the string of attacks that has struck Beirut after the subsequent Syrian withdrawal. The goal would be to destabilize the Syrian government. However, there has been no mention of Rifarat in the United Nations Melis reports on the crime. In 2010, Rifarat was living in Mayfair, London. As of 2011, update, he is living in Avenue Foch, Paris, while trying to sell off his real estate properties. I and me hi pay spy, a general in the security forces of communist Romania who defected to the U.S. in 1978, claimed that Rifarat al-Assad was recruited by Romanian intelligence during the Cold War. In Pay Spa's 1996 novel Red Horizons, Romanian President Nicolae Sosescu is quoted as saying that Rifarat was eating out of our hand and went on to say, do I need a back channel for secret political communications? A way to inform Harfa secretly about my future discussions with Carter? Do I need to have somebody disappear in the West? Rifarat will take care of it. Now he can't do without my money. Pacebar later reasserted this allegation, describing Rifarat as a well-paid agent. In a 2003 article in which he discussed the late Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, personal life. Rifarat married four times and his polygamous marriages as well as the marriages of his children have produced strong alliances and ties with prominent families and prestigious clans within Syria and the Arab Mashrek. He firstly married to one of his cousins, Amira, from al qadaha Then, he married Sana Maklauf, a cousin of Hafez Assad's wife, Zanisa. His third spouse is a young woman from the traditional Sunni Muslim establishment, Raja Barakat. His fourth wife, Lina al qaia is from one of the most prominent Alawite families in Syria. The sister of one of his spouses is married to the deceased King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. Rifarat's daughter Tumadir married Muang Nasif Kerbek, a member of the most powerful and prestigious Alawite family. Tamadine, another daughter, married in Maklauf. Lama married a Lafayette, the son of Alawite general Shafiq Fayad. Rifarat's eldest son, Muda, married Maya Haydar, the daughter of the ultra-rich entrepreneur Muhammad Haydar from the prominent Al-Haddadin Alawite tribe.